Hello YouTube! I am Lightly Salted and welcome back to the channel. I had spent last night editing a new video on the continuing adventures of U96, only to find today when I returned home from work that the 127 build has become official, which kind of makes my last video a little obsolete at this point. So, new plan! I thought we'd dive in and take a look at what this new build has to offer together. I've begun a new game, as of course the previous saves are no longer um, compatible with this version. We'll be starting again with U96 on the normal difficulty. Okay, jumping in, we see we've got a preset. Entertaining, balanced, and realistic. Alright, this appears to change our travel system. Audio we will leave to German again. Travel system. In dynamic mode, movement on the map will be faster and will resolve in similar time scale as battles. Realistic, movement on the map will be as in the real life. Very high time compression tools will be available to skip the time needed for travel. That sounds interesting. I think we'll go ahead and go with dynamic. Gameplay mode. We've got normal and first person. We'll stick with normal. Save mode. As in 126, we've got normal and ports only. I think we'll stick with normal again. Realistic build. No thank you. Expanded sailor management. This setting allows configurable jobs for sailors on the scheduled screen. Work at diving plane station, helmsman station, and cleaners work. All of these jobs have underlying mechanics. Hmm, that sounds interesting. I'd like to see what that looks like. We'll go ahead and turn expanded sailor management on. Oh, and interestingly enough, much like the Silent Hunter games, that has cranked up our realism to 14%. Darker Nights, I plan on leaving off again. Collision damage, no thank you. Hardcore aiming, I very much enjoy allowing the game to do certain calculations for me from time to time if I'm feeling lazy, so I'm going to go ahead and leave that off. Realistic Earth Curvature, yes please, I enjoy that. Detection Hint will leave on. Units... I prefer mixed units. Realism is now 18%. That's interesting. Coordinates style. We have classic and decimal. Coordinates for classic. Coordinates will be presented in degrees, minutes, and sometimes section, and sometimes seconds. Decimal coordinates will be displayed with a decimal fraction instead. Um, I think I'll go with classic. I'm not 100% sure what kind of difference that's going to make. Okay, let's jump in. Mr. Graf, hello again. I haven't seen you since 126. We'll go ahead and leave the captain as is, and I accept his name as Klaus Graf. I don't know about anybody else out there, but I'm getting pretty excited to see uh, see all the changes. A full list of the changes can be found on the, uh, the Steam community hub for this title. It appears to be fairly extensive. New aircraft, new ships, new mechanics, and apparently wolf pack attacks, in which you can actually, to some degree or another, gain access to... Uh, additional submarines to uh, set up attack runs. Okay. This looks very similar. Uh, much like my first tutorial, we're going to start at the top and work our way down. We continue to have our basic information about where we are, time, date. Our speedy buttons remain the same. Battery capacity is the same. Fuel, oxygen, discipline, reputation. We have a new icon. Currently, 5 of 16 sailors are on duty. It has no effect on the discipline. This appears, and I'm just guessing here, this appears uh, at first glance to be a more solid indication of where your discipline issues would be coming from with relation to too, too much work from officers. Ordinarily, you had to mouse over your discipline icon, and it would give you a readout there. Uh, this also shows me that... Five of my 16 sailors are doing stuff. We've got a person on the helmsman station, observation point, cleaning station, observation point, and galley. Interesting. So on top of knowing at a quick glance uh, the discipline aspect to having everyone working, it seems that we can also have access to knowing who's doing what. Budget seems to have remained the same. Our telegraph looks the same. Depth meter, rudder, map. Our map appears to be, if not the same, then very, very similar to before. How about the sub? Can we see any differences? She looks like U96 to me. 
Perhaps she's a little glossier. Hmm. There appears to have been some small graphical tweaks. That's interesting. Have a look at the internals. The command room appears to be the same. Mr. Hagnell, what can I interact with here? Uh, light switch, echo sounder, gyro compass. Good, good. The pump. Excellent. Interesting. I don't seem to have the ability to manually flood the tanks. That's definitely going to change my play style. Navigation, good. Observation post. Observation periscope, yes. Depth steers, all right. Mr. Osterman is busy on the radio. Everything looks very much the same. Listening room, the bunks. Cabinet. Any differences in the cabinet? The cabinet appears to be the same. The torpedoes look a little shinier than usual. Yes, I would say there have been a few graphical tweaks. We'll head aft. The crew compartment appears very much the same. The galley. How about stores? Stores remains unaffected. Now that's interesting. I have a mod applied, authentic goods, and it seems to be compatible with B127. All right, the engine room. The engine room appears the same. The graphics of this side of the diesels appears to be much smoother. They're completely out of my way at the moment. Okay. We have our ventilation. Does it look different? Negative. Ventilation remains the same. And again, a much smoother transition on the uh, electric engines and accumulators. We still have our workshop. Diesel compressor, electric compressor, and our rear torpedo launcher. Was, was there a difference in the torpedo launchers? No, nope. torpedoes look the same. The ship itself appears to be relatively unchanged. Um... Other than the small graphical improvements, everything seems much smoother. Our menu appears to be the same. Is there a U-Boat Topedia? No. U-Boat Topedia is still, still not built. Okay. Moving down here, we still have our detection point, our buoyancy, our detection hints. Now, down here at the bottom, in the icons for our officers, it appears that adding helpers to each one will be slightly easier, as these, um, these small icons are much larger than they were in the last build. So, that's, that's a positive. Uh, happy about that. At the bottom left of the screen, Mr. Klaus Hagnow with his four hit points. No experience. The jobs appear to be unchanged. Okay. How about the character screen? Any differences? The character screen looks to be identical. Skills, good. All right. So nothing, uh, nothing untoward as of yet. How about the dock? The dock appears to be very much the same. All personnel are still in their original positions. All right. Mr. Graf, warehouse. Hans Fischer, again, working as quartermaster for the docks. We have the same choices. And nothing appears to have changed over much in the resupply area. All right. How about recruitment? All right, same readouts. Same recruitment screen. Now this is different. Okay, I'm going to leave this and open this up from the Management tab to ensure that everything's all copacetic. Let's hide that. Management. And yes, we have a new screen altogether. Uh, the crew aspect, which is currently highlighted, appears to be nearly identical uh, to the original crew management screen. All right. But we have several new tabs. Let's go ahead and check squads. Wow. This screen allows to set up which and how many sailors should be assigned to a shift or an officer. Okay. At a quick glance, it appears that I can set up my 16 ordinary crew to work in shifts of 8 hours apiece. 
All right, so we have 8, 8, and 8 on the morning, evening, and night shift. That's interesting. It would appear that I could also add permanent help to my officers, as opposed to, as to the, as opposed to the willy-nilly fashion that we did before. Let's see what that looks like. I see. So, I selected Add Sailor and brought up this screen. This looks, again, very much like the management screen, except it appears I can select a specific crew member to work with our skipper. Now, does that affect everything game-wise? And yes, our helper is lit up in Mr. Graf's um, icon. Interestingly enough, I had read that in this build, there will no longer be a discipline penalty for having sailors attached to your officers if your officer is idle. So what does that mean? If I give a sailor to Mr. Graf, say Mr. Vogel here, and we leave, now Mr. Graf is making use of that sailor. And yes, here under the new crew tab, we can see that Albert Vogel has been assigned, has been specifically assigned to the skipper. Now what happens if I send our skipper to bed? So that mechanic there, so the squad's mechanic looks very much to be a way to permanently assign sailors to your officers without having to manage putting them on and taking them off as your officer performs certain tasks. This could come in handy on posts such as the navigation station, the deck gun, the engines, as each of those will require two helpers in order to maximize their benefits. Um, where this will not come in handy, if I were to add two sailors to Mr. Graf, both being Albert Bogle. Huh. Okay. All right. That appears to be a little bit of a bug there. Uh, Skipper, why don't you go ahead and jump on the attack periscope for me? All right. That's definitely something to make note of. It appears that under the squad function, I have the ability to infinitely add the same officer and it will not affect in-game performance. So according to my squads, Mr. Vogel has been added twice. However, it did not clone him for the sake of a better turn. Okay. Now, as I was pointing out, if I were to add two different sailors this time to Mr. Klaus Graf, he can only make use of one of them while working the attack periscope. And as we can see here, only Mr. Keller is showing up as actually working with the skipper. This doesn't feel 100% uh, fleshed out just yet. There seems to be a small discrepancy on how this would work. Ordinarily, uh, in previous builds, if I, say, add two members to work with the skipper uh, in this manner, or had two members working with the skipper and have him do a job in which only one of them would be useful, the other would simply stand idle, which we can see here because I've forced the issue. However, if I go back to one... Okay. So long story short, squads looks like it could be fairly useful um, because it seems the game is smart enough to understand that the captain can only take advantage of one of those personnel. So let's just make sure of that. We'll go back to management. We'll go to squads. We will add two sailors to our skipper. And no, no, it apparently is not that smart. Let's try something else. Let's have the skipper navigate. Okay, now the skipper can make use of both of those personnel. What if I switch him to the attack periscope? One remains idle. Um, it looks like this is a fantastic idea, uh, the adding sailors to um, your officers in this fashion. I can't see me making too much use of it, however. It seems to me that the old way may be best, simply using additional helpers when I require them. Okay, so that's squads. Uh, adding sailors to the shifts. I only have the 16 sailors aboard, so if I go ahead and load up Mr. Schneider and Mr. Weber, we are now at a full crew complement of 18. So if I was to click this... Oh dear. This seems to be a screen in which I would select very particular members for each shift. It certainly adds a layer of additional management to the game. 
uh, setting up work schedules individual to each sailor. Again, it's not something I'm sure I would often use. So what does this one do? Okay. Okay, I'm doing my math all kinds of wrong here, aren't I? All right, 18 sailors aboard. What if I click the plus button again? 10. Um, okay. What if I just... All right, okay. Okay, all right. This, um... This does not appear um, finished. Uh, in my opinion, this does not appear finished. So I don't have access to 20, 28 sailors, but it's allowing me to put 28 sailors on a single shift with nine sailors on an evening shift and an additional nine sailors on a night shift. So, yeah. Um, okay, okay. Okay, okay, that is, uh, that's squads in a nutshell. Realistically, folks, um, while I'm perfectly willing to, to learn the mechanic and test it out in real-world applications, well, not real-world applications, but you know what I'm saying, uh, I, I'm certainly willing to give this a try uh, to, uh, to give everyone out there a little more information on it. This feels um, like a feature that is not fully fleshed out yet. I, I, uh, I will not be using this in my normal play style, so uh, go ahead and hit me up in the comments down below if you're if learning more about it is something you'd like to uh, like to see. Okay, squads. All right, tasks. Oh dear God. Okay, tasks. Uh, this screen allows to set work priorities for officers and sailor shifts. Higher number means higher priority. Uh, selected prior priority may drop by a few points if the associated task is currently not profitable. Okay. All right, this seems to be on a scale of 1 to 10. Um, I would assume that 10 is the highest, with 1 being the lowest. Oh, dear, look at that. Okay, you can click anywhere and make zeros appear. Oh, please, God, no. No. All right. Okay, so let's take a look at the skipper. The skipper, his chief priority is um, calming officers that are panicking. That seems to be followed up by observation on the UZO. All right, that seems perfectly fair. He is a level five, likely to begin navigating. I'm assuming all of these functions are on their... Okay, we have 11s. I'm assuming all of these functions are an automated function. So if I don't tell Mr. Graf to do something else and left to his own devices, he will do things in a certain priority. Um, I thought it had gone to 10. It apparently goes to 11. Apparently sleeping is the is the most important thing to my crew. I can relate, guys, 100%. I get that. Okay, so this is interesting because I have never been a fan of the fact that the mechanics prioritize loading new torpedoes, vice warming the ones I have in the tubes. This has always been a bit of a, a contentious point with me. During attack runs, I'm likely going to launch all five of my torpedoes in rapid succession. Um, and then rather than keep warming the next, you know, three, four, however many, my engineer, or sorry, my mechanic drops everything and begins loading new torpedoes, which means I cannot fire more, uh, which means I cannot fire the torpedoes I intend to fire because they're not warmed. So it's interesting to me that I could change their priority. In build 126, I had to use a mod that would actually uh, use a, that would actually apply a script to reverse these. The mod was called, I believe, uh, Prioritize Warming. The fact that he believes repairs are right up there, that's fantastic, good. So Mr. Oldor, his priorities are fixing things and working the engines, fantastic, that's great. And sleeping again, very important. Our Radioman, Radioman is top priority, followed by our Hydrophone, if I switch him to Medic, does it change it? Yes, it does. Now that, that is an interesting mechanic. It's my, um, it's my habit to make my radio operator my Medic as they get bonuses later on down the line using their skills. So if I make him my Medic, it will absolutely prioritize uh, healing the sick and wounded over everything else, which is fine. But it automatically removes his priorities of his Radioman duties. So what if I manually give him some? 
Let's say I want him to work the radio first and foremost, and then work on the hydrophone if the radio is not available. That seems fair to me. Okay, I like it. Mr. Hagnow. Mr. Hagnow is designed to calm down our panicking officers immediately. Now, I'm wondering if there will be a conflict here. If I have the captain and our second in command awake at the same time and someone panics, will the game bug out if both of them are trying to do the same job? Well, no. It says down here that uh, it may drop if it's not profitable. So if Klaus gets to him first, so, well, Klaus and Klaus, if our skipper gets to him first, then Mr. Hagnow's next priority is navigation. Now, I feel like I want navigation to be much higher in his priority list. Uh, playing cards, let's drop that down to a five. I don't tend to use uh, my officers to improve morale outside of the radio. Resupplying ammunition, okay. Cooking for the crew is a six, okay, that's fine. I don't see anything wrong with that. Okay, so this is a very interesting mechanic. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing how it will benefit in the long run, or if it will cause the game to bug out. I'm going to leave this one at 10, because I want to see what kind of reaction the game will have if both leaders try to do something at the same time. Navigation being a 9 is fine. Okay. Alright. This seems fine for now, in all honesty. Again, I plan on doing some extensive, uh, some, some tweaks uh, offline here and see what I can make happen. Schedule. Schedule. Okay. So here's our morning shift. We have red, green, and red. All right. So red is free time. Green is work time. And blue appears to be... Blue? Purple? I'm not sure. This appears to be anything time. Anything time. So they could be doing any job. They could be sleeping, they could be performing their duties, they could be eating. Only seem to have access to the officers when it comes to scheduling out their day for the most part. The morning shift begins at 6 and stops at 2 o'clock. And then the personnel move to free time. The evening shift begins at 2 and ends at 10, at which point the night shift begins at 10, and works until 6 a.m. All right, that seems fair. So this appears to be a straight-eight format. Uh, militaries around the world use this in their navies. Uh, three rotating crews of eight hours apiece. That seems fine to me. It seems that it is simple as clicking to alter what it is you want your officers to be doing. Interesting. Okay, so rather than waiting for the sun to rise and then putting my skipper on the UZO as I've been doing since this game came out, I could set the captain to automatically work in this time frame. Although I'd probably have him working more around 7 through till 6, realistically. Alright, this is a fun mechanic. I like this one. This one's going to take a lot of work. Why don't we go ahead and have Mr. Graf begin his day at 7 a.m. So we'll call it work. He will work from 7 and I want him working a 12-hour day. If the sun's up, I want to be looking for ships actively. That leaves him with the rest of his days free. I think Mr. Graf will be my test subject on this, and uh, I'm going to see how that works out for him. Well, realistically, I'm going to see how it works out for me. If I interrupt him during patrols, how will this affect that? So let's say at this time of day, um, I decided I wanted him to grab a catnap and work from here to here. Will he reset automatically? Inquiring minds want to know. Mr. Hagnow, much like our tutorial series, I'm going to get you to move these 40 rounds to our deck gun storage. I do not want them in my storeroom. Mr. Oldorp, why don't we go ahead and check our, our storeroom? And yes, indeed, I would like you to have these spare parts. I see no reason to not set my boat up as I always have. I prefer to have my engineers, mechanics, with the spare parts on their person at all times in case of an emergency. And we'll go ahead and get you that rebreather. Handy dandy rebreathing device. Skipper, why don't we go ahead and start outfitting our boat? Fuel, absolutely priority one, followed by torpedoes. Much like in the original tutorial series, we are very low on budget. So my plan 
is to unload these T2s and get some of my money back. Goodbye T2s, now we are at 8,690, and I want T1s. I will take one for the rear. Can I just right-click it at this point? No, I still have to hit an additional button. Okay, and in the bow, I would like this one, and this one. You guys get the idea. So we don't have a ton of food aboard. Uh, we definitely want some fruit and vegetables. We've got room for more preserved pork, so we'll go ahead and take it. No reason to not. These med kits are going to go to our radio officer. I will want more replacement parts, but I believe I'll wait until Mr. Watcher is finished creating some for me. Items. I want more coffee. Always more coffee. Always, always. I have an additional rebreather for Mr. Watcher. Mr. Hagnow is going to get his dapper hat. Okay, while Mr. Watcher finishes up with his work on the spare parts, I will uh, throw in some time compression here, and I'll see you shortly. Thank you, Mr. Watcher. Will you take those spare parts for yourself, please? Fantastic. Thank you. And, of course, Mr. Watcher, I'd like you to have that rebreather in case of flooded compartments that require repairs. Yes, I would say there were graphical tweaks to this title. Again, I'm playing it on dead low due to my potato PC, but it's looking a little prettier than it was, in all honesty. Okay, as you can see, my CPU is just about pegged due to me um, recording at the same time. GPU usage is fairly low. Again, I'm not using a lot of my GPU on lowest. I am using a little less RAM. Uh, so this, this appears to have a small improvement in memory use. So that's, that's positive. It means more people are going to be able to play this game, and I think that's fantastic. Fantastic. Mr. Graf, let's talk to the CEO and get ourselves some orders. We have Sector CE, which is uh, fairly mid-Atlantic, um, 2,000 kilometers inside, 4,000 tons of GRT. We have BD. BD treated us very well in the tutorial series. I can hear everybody typing in the comments section below already, you should have done Portsmouth, you should have done Portsmouth. And I agree, getting that additional radio officer this early on would be fantastic. However, my boat is just not ready for it. Uh, without improved accumulators and snorkels and such, I really do not recommend attacking ports uh, this early on in the game. That sort of leaves me with CE and BD. Now, CE expects fog. I'm not 100% sure on the shipping lanes in CE. Um, I know that BD has a fairly, well, at least in build 126, had a fairly robust shipping lane in the northern quadrant. So much like the tutorial series, it looks like we're heading to BD right away. Let's go ahead and lock that in. All right, Mr. Oldorp, all ahead four, please. Mr. Hagenow. Whoa, we appear to have additions to our tab screen. All right, it's been a long uh, contended point that having to manually interact with certain aspects of the boat uh, has been irritating to some members of the community. It now appears that I have the ability to select them in the quick tab function. We have our searchlight to turn on and off, our ventilation, our bilge pump, electric compressor, and diesel compressor. And each officer seems to have those particular functions themselves. So if each officer has them, what happens if I click over here? Let's find out. I'm going to deselect our captain. We'll pull up tab. Let's hit the pump and see who heads for it. Who's going? And Mr. Daniel Lorenz is heading to the pump. Oh, developers, you are brilliant. Okay, folks, in the, uh, pre in the previous tutorials, you had to select an officer to head over and turn on these machines. Now I have the ability to independently send a member of the ordinary crew to do it. That is going to be a fantastic addition to our game. Yes, very pleased about that. So the pump is now on? It is on. Let's turn it off. Oh, yes. What else? Everything looks rocks. Assign Helmsman Station. All of my officers seem to have the ability to assign a Helmsman Station. Mr. Hagnow, what does assign Helmsman Station mean? Mr. Hagnow is heading over to the... Um, he's heading up the conning tower. The... The... What are you... 
So Mr. Hagnow is our helmsman's eyes at this point. Huh. Does that provide any benefit? I really couldn't say. What is the purpose of it then? I guess that's something we're going to have to learn together, folks. I'm interested. I'm intrigued. Where is this um, awesome time compression that I was promised? Perhaps I made the wrong selection when we started the game. We still have all of our bonuses from having uh, personnel on the navigation and on the engines, so that's a plus. Does red lighting still affect vision outside the ship? Okay, things are fairly dark. If I get Mr. Hagnow to... No, it appears I still require an officer to interact with our light switch to choose our color. Okay. Close. let's go ahead and switch to red lighting, please. Make sure the game still reacts as I will expect it to. And back to nav. And... Um... Yeah. I think it's brighter. It looks brighter, right? Yeah, it looks brighter. 100%. Okay. 100% looks brighter. Mr. Oldorp, you're getting tired very quickly. That's a little concerning. Has fatigue changed, I wonder? Hmm. I guess we'll have to find out. I think I'll go ahead and end the episode here. If you feel like learning along with Salted as we figure out B127, uh, stay tuned. Consider hitting that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. For all new people to the title, while there appears to be some differences, uh, it looks like a lot of the aspects that I touched on for Build 126 have remained the same uh, when it comes to tips, tricks, and getting started. So again, if you're brand new to the game, if you've just picked it up today, and you are starting playing 127, go ahead and take a look at the previous playlists, and uh, we'll get you up to speed. Questions, comments, and concerns can be left in the comments section. And of course, my social media links are in the description down below. I've been Lightly Salted. Thanks for tuning in. Bye now.